Hey, welcome to Live Lunch, coming at you live. It's Tuesday, September 25th, 2012. And uh, the end is uh, is coming up, right, Sandra? Because you started your your thing last night. I started, uh, we started our experiential working group, and it's the first time ever, and it was, wow. the first class was amazing. Amazing, amazing, but I have a lot to learn. You know, I'm, I'm really sorry I missed it. I have to get on track now. Yes, you do. Because I was really, I know. And you know what? As time is speeding up, Hugh, I am noticing you're talking is speeding up. You sounded like an auctioneer at the you beginning. You know why I'm right sounding like that? Because we got a really busy show today. Oh, okay. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. And we better start going okay, okay, into okay, okay, it okay, right okay, now. Okay, okay. Because, Thank uh, you for mentioning the group, though. It was awesome. Oh, and I, great, I'm going to find night. it next week. We can talk about it more. because okay, I'm sounds gonna, good. I'm going to come on Monday. Okay. okay. See, Wednesday. I am talking fast. Is it Wednesday? It was Monday yesterday, but every okay. day, it's, that was only because <laughs> we were holding ahead. it. Well, that's because we, we had to, we were holding it in the JCC, and they have a holiday this Wednesday. So from now on, oh. it's going to be on Wednesdays. And okay. the very last class, which yeah. is the coolest thing, I'll just mention real quick. Yeah. Very last class is the 12th class, and the last class is 12, 12, 12. I know. Wow. December 12, we 2012. That far. We will. Okay, good luck. Okay, well, we have Alan Max joining yep. us from yeah. the Superstar Sat Contest. Yay. Good to see you Hi guys. Hi, guys. Yes, thank you for having us on once again, and thank you for being a great sponsor. You guys have been just wonderful throughout this whole thing. Well, it's so nice for you to say that, yeah. Val, because sometimes, you know, I'm wondering if we're, if we're giving the superstars enough. No, I think you guys are doing just a great job, because you know what? If we got all of them up here, uh, we'd go on for days, which we'll talk about that in the future. Okay. So what's going on with the contest this week? What can people look forward to? Well, this week, we're, we're going up to the next two weeks, and then we're going to be going into a club in Toronto. We're, not, we're going to be announcing that next Tuesday. Okay. So this will be the last of the quarterfinals, so those people people that do want to get in on the contest have to either come to the club or sign up online. This week is the last no, one? No, no. In the, another week we're going we're gonna to okay. mention the new club that okay. this is going to take place and okay. then they're going to they're gonna have to sign up. Okay. And there will be a panel of judges there and uh, there will be a panel of four judges. Four judges. TBA to be announced and it's a surprise and come on down and bring your band, bring your self as a single or solo artist, bring yourself sing a cappella, it doesn't matter. You can be a poet, it doesn't matter. Just come As long down. as it's original. It's an original works, and that's what they're looking for. But we don't know the venue yet? No, I'm working on the venue, and I won't know until tomorrow. Okay. But it's in Toronto. All right. And it's not going to be far. It'll be accessible by TTC. And, and we have to check the website, right, Val, to find out? Well, I'll mention it on the show next Tuesday. Okay, because. Okay, but it will also be on the website. Yes, but they it'll can also always, be on the everything's yes. on the website. Which is Absolutely. superstars.ca with yes. a Z. Yes. Superstars. With a Z. With a Z. With a Z. With a Z. Yes. Don't forget. Not a Z, a yeah. Z. Because this is Canadian, don't you know? Right. Okay. A. <laughs> <laughs> and we're giving away a value of $25,000 in music related prizes. So. I know. It's yeah, be it's great. really, it's be really, really amazing. It's an amazing package. Yeah. Some great performers, too. Well, we've got some of those performers coming on in just a sec on the show today. We've got yep. uh, Miss Ramnik, uh, yep. joined by Michael Fonfara. Yep. Yep. Uh, yeah, Yeah. And we're looking forward to that. Sort of session player. And mm -hmm. Well, he's done everything, right? He's I mean, done. some of the. So who are some, just. We don't want to take away from Miss Ramnik, but who's Michael played with some of the artists? Lou Reed. Yeah. Lou Reed? Yeah, he's yeah. played with some wow. great Wow. And, and, and probably a list, that's, and I know we probably can't think of them all, but I know it's an awesome he know, list. He, the list goes on and yeah. on. Yeah, he's, he's, been, he's, a he's been in the Emmy circle and, and, and right. that kind of thing too, right? And Emmy he's played circles. on singles that you've heard through the years, uh, you know, all over the radio for oh, yeah. years. He's been around. He's uh, a well, well-adjusted man in the piano Absolutely. field, wow. I'm telling you. Wow. He's very good at that. I, I, I have, you know, sat in with him before, and, and like, this guy's a... A season better what he does. He's put he sure more is. than 50 years of his heart into what he loves to do. Yeah. And you know what's really farmer. cool about him? He's so Canadian. He's so he down is. to earth. He's, and you I've never, never heard him say know a. it. Yeah. You, <laughs> and you, but you would never know what to talk to him. He's so down to earth. You would never know he's got that well, like kind of. Well, like some of these rock stars. Yeah, they're I just know, real eh? rock stars. I know, eh? <laughs> 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 and look at I went out shopping for leather pants the other day. Where are they? I'm looking. I'm still looking. Okay. Yes, that's how picky she is. And I bet you, Val, and I bet you, you only eat the red M and M's or Smarties, right? In your no. stage room, that's what you that have. Oh yeah, no, but I like the black ones too. No, see, it used to be red. Now then, they introduced the blue ones. Yeah. Oh, everyone's right? blue. So that when you oh. sing and you smile, your tongue is blue. Oh, no, I like the black ones because I used to like Zambuca. 
See, that uh, tastes like, li you know, the black the licorice? black so licorice. That's why. Oh, okay. okay, enough of this nonsense. Sorry. Let's okay. get back to the music, please. All right, yes. what we're going to do, we've got to get busy with the show yes. today, but uh, just remind everybody, superstars with a Z.ca, .ca. they can yeah. check it out. Yep. And, um, and uh, we're going to uh, just have a performance in a sec by uh, Miss Ramnik yep. and uh, Michael Fonfera. But uh, just to tell people uh, what we got on the show today, we got uh, Jeff Stern, the filmmaker of uh, a film called Chubby Chaser. It's going to wow. be on a TVO tomorrow. Wow, Ooh. very cool. We got Chubby Cup Chaser. Cupid King of Hearts coming on the show today. Stacy uh, Y is here. She's going to perform. And Chaplin, another songwriter, will be on the show. And then Joe Barbieri to talk oh, about the economy. The Cube Guy. The, the, He's See, got his own show called The Cube, That's right. right. Wow. Right here on that channel. Great. So uh, let's uh, awesome. let's uh, listen to uh, Miss Ramnik now, uh, yes. Superstars contestant. Yes. And we're going to come back after that uh, with uh, Jeff Stern uh, all about the Chubby yeah. Chasers. I heard her um, rehearsing and just can't not bebop. Look into my eyes, look into my heart See the way I feel, I want this all to stop No more driving by, no more hang-up halls No more empty lies, I want this all to stop Cause you can tell me you love me, but you don't care You say you want me, baby, but it's not there What do you do at night when I'm not around you? You ever cry alone in the tears I'm found Looking for the edge, I'm gonna be on top I put on this wig and I imitate a cop I don't wanna call or check up on you Cause I'm not your mother, cause that's not my job Cause you can tell me you love me, but you don't care You say you want me, baby, but it's not there What do you do at night when I'm not around? You ever cry alone in the tears I'm found? Sure you want me now, do you want me back? You better prove to me what love is all about Do you want to stay, do you want to go? Make up your mind, gonna boot you off the door Cause you can tell me you love me, but you don't care You say you want me, baby, but it's not fair What do you do at night when I'm not around? You ever cry alone when the tears aren't found The way you wink your eye You think you're so cool But you're really not that smart I'll find another man Who will treat me right Stop the silly urge I want the thought to stop Cause you can tell me you love me But you don't care You say you want me baby, But it's not fair What do you do at night When I'm not around You ever cry alone And the tears on sound Cause you can tell me you love me But you don't care You say you want me baby, But it's not fair What do you do at night When I'm not around You ever cry <laughs> Thank you. From everyone else, I called the only beauty experts I know, my teenage nieces. Doing this documentary. Do you have a name for guys who like big girls? <laughs> chubby chasers. Hey guys, I'm looking for chubby chasers. Hey, you know any guys who like big girls? You know any guys who like big girls? There's a lot of people who say, that admirer, oh, I'm a man who likes large women. I've never known anybody like that. Big hips, big bums, big breasts. Of course these are naturally desirable to us. They're images of fertility and health. And yet we're embarrassed to say this. We seek out to be seen with extremely slim partners. Most of my girlfriends in the past have been quite slim. And yet I lust after images of women who are large. I'm sure who would rather be called a slut than fat. As of 10 years ago, the normal average body size for a woman was size 12 or 14. This is not a plus size. 14 is not a plus size. That is the normal size. You go into a plus size store and it's not even sizes anymore. It's 1X. It's 2X. It's 3X. What does that mean? <laughs> Three strikes and you're out? I'm really tired of hearing, oh, you have such a really great face. If you could just lose some weight. You know what? F that. Let him stay fat.
My name is Zik Yukeja and I'm the publisher and owner of Bud Interest Magazine. We are the playboy for fat chicks. All my friends know it to the point where a friend of mine will come up to me and say, Oh, Steve, I saw a girl at Walmart you would love. She, her, she was as wide as the cart. And I can remember when I first started looking at women, I said, all they have to be is bigger than me. When I was like uh, 18, that was my first sexual experience with a larger woman. She came into uh, the living room uh, dressed in a very long, long uh, robe and opened up her robe and I, 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 I was shocked. I was in shock. I was in awe. I was in love and I was hooked. Okay, we're back on the show here, and uh, we just saw the trailer for uh, Chubby... Chubby Chaser? Is it Chubby... Chubby Chaser. Chubby Chaser. We've got the filmmaker Jeff Stern here, and Jeff, Hi, Jeff. Uh, great to have you on the show here. Yeah, it's wonderful to be here. And I was just saying, uh, you know, while we're watching that, you know, when, when I got the trailer to look at, I, I said, my God, what are you getting us into here? And, uh, and Jeff, what, what are you getting us into here? <laughs> yeah, this? this project was quite a... Quite an adventure. Uh, when I first came up with the, about three years ago, uh, a producer in in Toronto here was telling me about uh, a project uh, that they made about body image and beauty in the 1980s, and it was very like a feminist sort of concept of uh, how we look at beauty and body image. And um, it was in French, and it was selling off the charts. And they said, "We wish we had a." an English version, mm -hmm. it was made in Quebec, and then at that exact same time when I heard that, uh, I, uh, my niece, who was in grade six, she happened to be the biggest girl in her class, biggest person in her class. When you say and, biggest, mm -hmm. you mean heaviest or tallest? No, tallest, like uh, she was very athletic. She just okay. grew faster than, okay. and that happens in grade six and seven and eight. Mm -hmm. So uh, she played all these sports and everything, but it was really an issue for her. She was really stressed, and I saw it on Facebook so that she did. Wow. She was having bad body image problems. I mm -hmm. thought, well, maybe I can make a project that you know, sort of opens up the dialogue around body image and beauty, and sort of sets things kind of straight around it. Mm -hmm. So, well. <clears throat> A serious film about Bob, body image to a film called Chubby Chaser. What happened there, Jeff? <laughs> well, it's funny, too, because also uh, it was to deal with the subject matter. So how do you deal with the subject matter in a way that is engaging and mm -hmm. uh, people will actually feel like, oh, well, this is interesting. Mm -hmm. So I kind of came in from the, from the back door of the argument. Okay. And then I thought, and plus TVO, when uh, I pitched it to TVO, they were really interested in making a point of view documentary, meaning mm -hmm. it's sort of the filmmaker's... Perspective. Yeah, perspective. Okay. So okay. that's when I said, well, maybe I can use this idea of that I've always been attracted to larger women and sort of, it's kind of a taboo subject. So I thought, oh, well, Maybe I should discuss it that way. It's sort mm -hmm. of like an honest way of looking at mm -hmm. things. Very interesting angle. Yeah, and we always hear from the women. It's like women have been feminists have been talking about body image and beauty for the last twenty or thirty years. Guys, they don't really talk about it that much. So I thought that would be a good hook to sort of bring the guys Isn't in, bring the guys in, and, and and then open up the dialogue. I was surprised how huh. many women really want to know about what guys think about beauty and body image. Hmm. Wow, so is it so this is a candid straight talk? Yeah, it's like I went out and I tried to find out why is it that I like larger size women and yet I've grown up in a culture that is obsessed with thin beauty. Yeah, I think you need to move. You're in the wrong country. So, what happened? Uh, did, did you did you figure out what the reason might be? Well, I went on this journey where I, I talked to specialists, psychologists and Really? And are they on the show as well? Uh, you know what the funny thing is, a psychologist, my big shock is when I went to a uh, head of sexual psychology at, uh, at U of T, he, put, he said it straight right away. He goes, I can tell you what rats want to mate with and dogs want to mate with, but as far as humans are concerned, we know very little oh, because it's really hard to research these things. Because people aren't usually honest anyway. Exactly. So. 
And the people who uh. they do choose to do research on perspectives of be beauty uh, happen to be university students from Berkeley and okay. they're a very small group. And a lot of research was done in the 80s and 90s with, um, you know, because it was just affordable to get a bunch of university students yeah. from a lab and just ask them about a bunch of questions. The only problem is that that's a small you need minority all ages of too. what humans, yeah. uh, all of the world sees as beautiful. Yeah, yeah, because you know what? If you ask those university students 20 years later, their perception's gonna be very, exactly. very different. Exactly, they change your ideals of beauty change over time. and. But it's just, nobody really wants to discuss these things, so it's really hard to research. Wow, so was this primarily a focus on chubby, why you like chubby women, or why men like who they like? Really it was like, well, why do, why is our culture so obsessed with thin okay. ideals? Okay, okay. Sort okay. of like the fashion Isn't industry. Isn't that interesting, wow. And what, out of all the guys, and they, they estimate that about one in 10 guys are openly interested in large sized women. And I tried to find out, I thought, well, why am I this way? And there's no one reason. Some people think it's anthropological, some people think it's social. Mm -hmm. So it's, and we can't prove all this, so they're all just theories. And so I just go through all the theories and sort of dis discuss, and I bring my nieces, they're, teenage nieces, because I knew nothing about beauty. I'm a guy. So I thought I'd recruit my nieces who are obsessed with beauty because teenagers, that's yeah, what they're obsessed course, with. Of course, yeah. So they kind of become my sidekicks and sort of put me on the path of, oh, this is the way we look and this is the way popular culture is. So through this journey of putting this film together, uh, did you, were you able to identify why maybe our culture? And when, you, when we say that we were talking that there are different you know, there's the United States, and we have Canada, and different provinces, and everybody's slightly different culture, right? But why is our culture so obsessed with, did you find out why? One of the strongest theories that are out there, and it sort of has a pattern that, oh, well, as soon as the industrial age really took hold, and sort of uh, dominated consumerism and everything, it sort of fit the fashion industry in Hollywood. Like, I work in films too, and it's always great. You always need an actor that's small. If mm -hmm. they're big, if they're tall, mm -hmm. that's a problem. Mm -hmm. If they're large, wardrobe costs more. Mm -hmm. So, oh, you don't really think about those things. But it is true, a lot of these famous celebrities are, when you see them, like at the film festival, people are like, oh, they're much smaller than I thought. They're very, everyone's, and even models, fashion models, yes. they have to be. A Rakes. Cer certain height, and it's not to do with really um, what is uh, someone's appeal to beauty. It's what's efficient, what costs less. It, for example, one time I came up with this concept that I said, "Oh well, if every woman in America lost 10 pounds, how much would the fashion industry save in material oh, wow, buttons? That's true. It would that's be true. million trillions of dollars." But how much would the food industry lose? Exactly. Good point. Good so point. So it's this, but w in America, well, we're how many stuck more with people can we feed? Uh, the ideal. Yes. And mm -hmm. it seems like rich people and movie stars are all thin. In other words, they have the ability to sort of control their bodies, it's uh, this but, concept. But you know what though, it really is a perception because exactly. the reason I said at the beginning is you're in the wrong countries because I was in the Middle East and I was in Turkey oh, yeah. and, and I was with a friend of mine who is heavier than me and oh my God, she was just like bombarded oh. right, left and center and, and I'm too skinny. Oh, I yeah. was considered mm -hmm. unattractive. Now, from it's a cultural, yeah, now it's from, a cultural. From you see that in the Caribbean culture too. And, mm -hmm. But from their perspective, there's reasons for for this because when you're bigger, you look like you have food, which you means you look more. like you're wealthy, right? Exactly. So, so the men were more attracted there. There's actually places in Africa when you go for your wedding, women put on forty or fifty pounds. They go to like a spa oh to here grow we, larger. Here we try to lose weight to fit into a smaller size wedding dress. Exactly. It's just so funny how that works. It was it was really really interesting to me to see that because I really le learned a lot. And you know, it's not it really is not about what is more attractive. It's more about perception of what attractiveness is. Exactly. I did find out that uh, 
being attractive or beautiful is sort of linked to health in a way. So when in the old, old times before the Industrial Revolution, when you saw a bigger woman, you would say, well, she's the healthiest because she's got the food. She'll yes, live. yes. So it's a perception of health, really. And then she can bear more children or exactly. whatever. Exactly. So and if we see, and now it's almost in America, in our modern age, we see thin as being healthy. And sometimes it gets skewed because one thing that's funny about fashion models is they're very unhealthy. They, it's, they too it's too right? thin. It's too but thin. But we still perceive that as yes. being yes. the ideal beauty. So yes. it doesn't always work out right. But And if anybody has seen those models in real life, oh, yeah. okay, they are not attractive in terms of their thinness. They actually look unhealthy. I didn't unhealthy. know that like, the average well, lifespan of a model, of top-end fashion models, 55. Yeah. I wonder if it has something to do with, well, of course, they're on camera. They look good on camera. Because it puts on 10 pounds or something. They something see, right? like that. But also, I was thinking that in terms of the root cause, I think once we have TV and movies, and we have a culture that spends a lot of time looking at TV and movies, mm -hmm. all of a sudden, it's like a mirror is, is brought up to exactly. everyone in the culture, and everyone is now comparing themselves yeah. to what they see on TV and movies, which will tend to be the most, the best specimens, the most beautiful people, right? So, I think it's changing, though. We do have more plus-size female icons well, than we used to have. Well, and we have stores that cater yes. to that demographic specifically. Exactly. So, is it changing? Is are we are we moving away from this uh, fixation on? Yeah, when, when I did talk to pl a lot of plus-size models, they did. I asked them this question, and they were like, "Oh, yeah." It seems as soon as the internet came in, mm. it became to, there was a sort of a, a fractioning of what we perceive as beautiful due wow. to there, there wasn't a monopoly. When I was a teenager back in the 80s, there was four or five avenues that would tell you what is beautiful. This, everything from Playboy, mm -hmm. you know, to uh, Hollywood and then Vogue and everything. Now, with the internet, Boom, it's all been fractured. Uh, you can have communities, there's a plus size community. Even for shopping, a lot of the plus size girls, they go online to buy their clothes now. Mm -hmm. And you can have, a, if you have a little shop in Toronto in designing plus size clothes, well, and you're selling on the internet, you don't have to worry about just your corner you street. Got right. market, you got a global market. You got a global market. And I, I didn't know this, a, a lot of plus size girls in the old days would have to, to get really good clothes mm -hmm. that fit them and was very fashionable. You only could go to New York. New York. Wow. That was it. Wow. So a lot That's, of people would just whoa. plan their vacation That's to expensive. go to New York just to buy clothes. Well, it's getting. I guess the, the, the people who are making the clothes can access their niche exactly. audiences and maybe those women who otherwise might think there's, there's no guys for them can access those guys oh, yeah. who are in that niche true. as well. But you know what, we're always, we never seem to be happy with what we have. We all, the grass is always greener. You know, I can't tell you how many people I know who have straight hair who would die for curly hair and the people with curly hair would die for the straight hair. It's, it's so true. there's something with that. You know, there's something about just not being happy with who we are. Well, yeah, are we gonna get over that one, Jeff? Yep. <laughs> Jeff says so, so we are. Okay, so this is going to be on TVO tomorrow, tomorrow night. night, right? Yeah, the 26th. At 9, 9, 9 p.m. And how long is the show? Is it an hour? It's a 47-minute okay. documentary. So it's an hour. So yeah. there's commercial. Yeah. TV hour. Yeah. So I guess people who have more questions about this can uh, just check it out tomorrow night. Yeah. And is there a website that goes with the You can film? watch it. At, if, you can't, if you don't have cable, you can watch it online after the broadcast at tvo.org slash docstudio. You know what? Well, you need to be interviewed by Steve Pakin. And talk, because this is a great, great subject. Thank you so much for having the courage to come out and say that you are, uh, you know, attracted to, um, because that's really coming out of the closet. Yeah, that's a lot of I had don't to say I'm attracted to overweight women or chubby women or however yeah, yeah, you call whatever. it, large women. Um, so thank you for having the courage to oh, do that. And thank great. you for doing this. It's really interesting. It's really interesting. Thanks a lot. Okay, Jeff. Thanks for doing this. Looking forward to seeing the whole film Me tomorrow too. night on TVO so cool. at 9 o'clock. And uh, we're going to take a little break now okay. and uh, play a, a track by uh, Cupid, King of Hearts. And we're going to come back and chat with him as the lunch continues right after this. Knows no one fucks like Cupid. Man like me ain't never been seen. I got the walk and the talk and I'm dressing me. God, God made me out of ecstasy. And I know you want to know what the recipe. Come on, come on over, mommy, get next to me. I just want to see what's up in them jeans. Jump in the club, baby, let me see you bump. Jump, jump in the club, baby, let me see you bump. 
me see you bump. Jump in the club, baby, let me see you bump. Jump, 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 jump. let me see you bump. Get a low in it, go low from it. Get a low in it, go low from it. Get a low in it, go low from it. Get a low in it. I'm up in this club and I'm here for a reason To find the next chick, who will I be pleasing? I like heavy breathing, I love it when they seen it Don't drop it low, ma, you out of season Listen up, baby, I got nothing to hide Picture in my face in between your thighs I know that you know, stop living a lie I don't need the cush, cause the cooch is mine So fly if you wanna, please, no prima donna Up and down that road, I don't need the drama Brains on point, I think she's a scholar Pop, pop, pop my collar, off goes the product Chicken toddler, think finger licking chicken good, make him wanna swallow. Milk makes her thirsty, girl wants to hurt me. My mind's down south, yo, I'm so dirty. Jump in the club, baby, let me see you bump. Jump, jump in the club, baby, let me see you bump. Jump in the club, baby, let me see you bump. Jump, 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 jump let me see you bump. Get a low in it, go low from it. Get a low in it, go low from it. Get a low in it, go low from it. Get a low in it. In the morning, you'll be asking what happened. Jump in the club, baby, let me see you bump. Jump, jump, jump in the club, baby, let me see you bump. Jump in the club, baby, let me see you bump. Jump, 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 jump let me see you bump. Get a low with it, go low from it. Get a low with it, go low from it. Get a low with it, go low from it. Get a low with it. All right, so that was. Uh What's that song called, Cupid? See You Bump? That was See You Bump. See You Bump. That was uh, the first see song I bump? ever... See You Bump? Yeah, See You okay. Bump. That was the first, cool. first song I ever recorded. What does that mean in hip-hop, bump? Um, it's, it's, it's just a, a dancing reference, basically. Yeah. You know, I, you okay. know, I want to I wanna see how you move. I, I, I like to do a lot of music that's fun, clubby stuff, and, and I like to watch women dance. So, you know. No matter what size? No, 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 I, I, no, I, no I, I, it doesn't make a difference. You know, every woman has the potential to be sexy. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. You know Very what? Good and, and, and again, in different cultures, look at belly yeah. dancing. Oh, okay. Oh, they yeah. say that you have to have a belly to, to, to be a belly dancer. Yeah. Right? So, by. Otherwise, it's just dancing. <laughs> it's bumping. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, uh, we were just ta chatting before you came on uh, Cupid, and you mentioned you're from Aurelia yeah, originally. Yeah. You just went back there? Yeah, I just moved back from Toronto. Um, I, I spent uh, the last six months down here. Uh, my little cousin Emma, she had been battling cancer. Aww. So uh, I, I kind of came down here. I, I've been going through back therapy um, since my car accident in 08, and uh, I'm still struggling with that. So I came down here to do some extensive therapy and move close to sick kids so I could spend some time with her while she was Aww, here. And now lovely. she's just kind of, you know, she's winning the battle, Yay. you know, so uh, there's always hope. And uh, she's she moved back home now. She's going back to school. They're letting her go back to That's school for a little bit. That's excellent, so she can feel normal. Yeah, you know, and uh, I mean, I've never seen a kid that, that wanted something so bad and, and was so optimistic yeah. with mm -hmm. being diagnosed and everything. So, mm. you know, well, it was great you know, to see. They, they teach us resilience, don't they? They do. They do. Well, they can actually pick us up, even though they're the ones who are ill. They actually are the ones who cheer us up. That's just it, you know. Uh, with her family struggling with it, and, and like her mom and dad, and you know, it, it's, it's tough to deal with for no anybody, kidding. and everybody's no been kidding. through that. So yeah. she was the one that really held them up. You know, wow. she was. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, it was. It was exquisite. It was amazing. Wow! All the best to her. Wow! That's mm -hmm. amazing. Thank you. Thank you. So. Um, now, were you working on, on the music while you were in Toronto as well? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I spent some time, I, I did some shows down here, and uh, we, we we're kind of revamping things right now. Um, after doing a couple shows, I won a showcase uh, for a little music circle for oh, nice. Warner Brothers. Oh, congratulations. Um, thank you. Uh, so we met with them, and, and then uh, I headlined another showcase in Montreal and got an opportunity to see Universal and talk to them and, and, and kind of get a perspective on what they would expect to see from me. Um, both loving what I do, 
um, and that I'm a little different, I'm outside the box. So, you know, they both gave me, it was, it was weird because, you know, the Warner Brothers, they looked at me and they gave me, you know, this view and said, you know, you should go down this path, this is what we'd love to see. Universal was almost completely opposite of what they would like to see. Unbelievable. Yeah. So, How does that work? Um, I mean, well, I mean, I think from what I can say, what I've learned in a very short period of time is that uh, for anybody going into this business, um, you have to love what you want to do, but you have to build a certain team. Not every manager is good for every artist. Not every label is good for every artist. You know, that's why... There's a chemistry oh, there too, right? and, and they focus on different genres. You know, it's, uh, okay. Okay. you know, some management, they can be great managers known throughout the business for country artists. Uh -huh. So if you're a hip-hop uh -huh. artist, they might look at you and go, you're amazing, but I don't thing. know how to deal with yeah. you. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So, so you said you were outside the box? Yeah, I'm a little outside the box now, as far as hip-hop yeah, What does that mean? Um, I mean, I, uh, I'm a northern, small... Is it because you're white? Uh, well, yeah, that's definitely one thing. Okay. Um, we, we've got some great white hip-hop artists uh, now, you know, that have really stepped out and, and done some great things. Uh, one of my favorites, Eminem, obviously. Um, but be, myself being a small town, you know... Farm boy almost. Farm boy almost, yeah. Um, <laughs> So and, and that's my perception of you, Cupid. Yeah, and I and I do I, I mean I do party hip hop, you know. So I, again, that's 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 a little different, you know. I, I haven't taken that whole um, gangster rap slash club music, which is is very big. Okay. Um, you know, I've I've just strictly gone the route like Ludacris, you know. That I love to have fun. I'm doing what I love to do. I have some serious songs um, that'll be on the album and tell a little bit about me, mm -hmm. but I mean, I love to have fun and I think that's what music is for so many people. It's, you know, you know, it's three and a half, four minutes to get away from something that makes you think about something or having a good time. And so is it fair to say that your lyrics are intelligent? Not that other hip hop, hop artists are, but is, is the focus, because a lot of what I know is like the gangsta stuff and you know, it's all to me, it's all the same thing. Over that's all and she over. listens to is the gangsta stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, that's and it's what I, over and over again, the same thing. And I'm tired of listening to that. I want to listen to something um, yeah, I mean that's a little different. Uh, like maybe that has some sort of substance. Yeah, because you've heard that that hasn't been said over and over and over and over and over again, and the same thing over and over and the same song. Yeah, like it's like one line makes up the whole song. Sorry, guys, but that's really. I I, I mean I, I do have every song I try and do a little different. You know whether that's the instruments that we bring into it, the whole feel of the song. Every song I have is different. I want an album that can reach out to everybody. You know, by the time I'm even, done... Even and, us? Yeah, even you. Um, <laughs> you know, I mean, I, my, my dad was not a hip-hop guy growing up. You know, it was, you know, country and yes, rock music. Yes. And, really, and being, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Being that northern boy, I mean, that's what I was exposed to. And I love that stuff. I love blues. I love jazz. Um, I, I listen to a little bit of everything. So is it fair to say that's influencing your hip-hop? Um, yeah, I mean, across the board, I would say every genre of music has influenced me to some degree. You know, um, I, I do love what I do, and I do want to, I want to show what hip-hop is for me to everyone. Because there are people that sit outside the box, again, and, and go, I only like country music, I only like rock, that rap stuff, that rap stuff, you know, they don't want to hear it. My dad was one of those guys, very avid against hip-hop music until I started writing it. Mm -hmm. You know, wow. and nice. uh, and when I started writing it, and my dad got a chance to hear some of my stuff, you know, he started to take to the stuff on the radio and go, okay, maybe I will listen to this. You know, that's you that's, know? that's good. It, it takes some people some time to get into the good stuff and to recognize the good stuff. But some people are just really prejudiced against it, and yeah. they'll just never get over it. Yeah, yeah, I know. I if it's it's hip hop music. I don't want to listen to it. Yeah, you know, and and I think I mean. Every, every type of music has, a, there's artists, different artists, depending on who you listen to. Mm -hmm. um, some artists in hip hop music are very deep. You know, Common is one, uh, very, very deep artist. You know, Eminem's new album is very, very deep. He, he again, yeah, some, some of these lyrics, some of them, the, again, the more intelligent, is amazing stuff, yeah. absolutely amazing stuff. Yeah. I was blown away, actually, when I was in Montreal on the judging panel that was there. I mean, I spoke with them, even though I wasn't involved in the contest, and I was just a headliner. I spoke to the judges panel afterwards. I was just know, a headliner, okay. And, uh, <laughs> to, to see what it is that they had to say. You know, I, I, I love constructive criticism, you know, and it makes Good me a better artist. So to, to sit down and talk to them and, and 
they refer to me as a lyricist, which I... Oh, I, wow, that's amazing. To me, that's amazing. I, I was blown away. You know, that yeah. wasn't what I was expecting to hear. Um, wow, that's but, lovely. But I, I mean, I, I do like to hear stuff like that, you know, and it, it keeps me confidence, and confidence is what you need in this industry, for sure. You know, a lot of uh, uh, people in Canada, in the Canadian hip-hop scene, are, are talking about that there's a, a, a unique, uh, fresh Canadian sound to hip-hop. And uh, I know that even I, you know, you're back in Aurelia now. I know that there's a lot going on in Barrie in, yep. the, in the hip hop scene. And, uh, really? and just, just wow. uh, I just wonder what your take on on Canadian hip hop was and Versus how it's being US how it's being mean? accepted uh, elsewhere, um, I, or I, even in Canada. I, I mean, Canada is again me being outside the box. Canada is very very difficult to break into the hip hop industry because of the market that you have in the US and the artists that we have there and how they push their artists. It's very difficult mm. here without uh, a, a, a big financial backing yes. to get where you need to be to have these major labels interested in you and, and really want to jump behind you. So it makes things difficult and it's frustrating for a lot of hip hop artists, but we do have so many great artists here. I mean, Classified's been doing this for 16 years. I love Classified, I performed with him. And I mean, his, he's just really breaking to the public now like a lot of people are wow. just figuring wow. out who classified is I mean he had a song at the Olympics so mm -hmm. you wow. know, how That's much big bigger stuff. do you really yeah. need to be and and the guy's still yeah. not over the border a mad child is another guy that crazy lyrics but an amazing lyricist very deep from swollen members I also I, I had also did a show with them great great guys I mean we have some amazing talent here so then how did you Cupid get in front of Universal and what was the other label you got in front of uh, Warner, Warner, Warner. How did you manage to do that? Uh, well, I, I won the showcase. At, How did you uh, win that showcase? Did you just hear about it? And just um, my manager, my manager came to me and asked me if I wanted to enter into a showcase. Okay. That um, the winner got an opportunity to sit down with Warner Brothers. Okay. So uh, and okay. that was through the music circle. Okay. Um, so I, I did that. I, I won and and I got a chance to sit down with them, which was. You know, great opportunity for me to hear no what kidding. they had to say no and, kidding. and what they thought of me. Um, and then I headlined the event in Montreal, and the judges panel, one of them was from Universal. Okay. So, you know, I got a chance to be. How did you get to them. headline in Montreal? Um, I, again, what, my manager, I finally have a, a call. So you have a good manager. I, Is that how you're getting? A, yeah, I mean, I'm trying to ask these questions for people out there who are, are you know, thinking, okay, I, I want to do this, but I can't imagine getting in front of somebody like Universal. How the heck did this man win this? You really need to, you really need to find a good manager. Okay. Um, I mean, I've, I've gone through my management battles. Um, in a short period of time, I got, I got involved in this after my car accident. That's what kind of pushed me back into music. And then the first guy came across to manage me and stuff. Um, didn't really have the time I needed to, to, to dedicate into my career and push me as an artist. And you'll okay. see so you go through that frustration, and a lot of artists do, because they think, as long as I have a manager, they can get me where I need to be. And but they can do all the work. That's not the case. Okay. You know, uh, it depends on what they've done in their past, who they're connected to, and okay. these are things okay. that they need to do. With the manager okay. I have right now, um, I, I've been very fortunate dealing with TMD management and, and having them kind of push me in the right direction and open some doors for me and get me in front of some people that... Is it fair to say a manager can make or break you then? A hundred percent. A hundred percent. I mean, okay. it takes artists, you know, on, on average five to seven years to break um, wow. to really that's be a, a big artist. And that's a long road to take. That is. And very frustrating for that's some. That's more than having going to school to be a doctor. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, look at it's, that. it's like any, uh, any kind of musical or artistic career. It's like the artist is just one part of a chain of, of people that are all important in that in making that happen. It is a machine and you got a great chemistry. Yeah, I, I mean right now that's that's the main focus after talking to them. We're we're kind of revamping everything as as far as my website, what we plan on doing with videos. Oh, that's the whole other side of it. Yeah. Um, yeah, website. and that's the thing. You you really do you need to build a team. You need a market you need a marketing team. You need radio promoters. Um, you, you know you need to find the right guys to shoot videos to get to make sure that what you're writing as an artist is really coming out on film. You know, because that's the other thing. I mean, I've seen videos on Much Music that the video has nothing to do with yeah. the song. Yeah. You know, and, yeah. and it kind of blows you away that people would even put that out. But <laughs> uh, me as an artist, I like to, to have, you know, what's that's, in in my mind. Yeah. So that's a real disconnect then between in, in the machine, there's, there's, there's a broken link. Yes. If you see a video that's not even 
close well, to the sun. Unless somehow it just works. Well, and right? they, and they know, could look at it that yeah. that'll be what sticks in people's heads you know, when they're yeah, watching okay, it, so right? It's part of their strategy. Yeah, somebody okay. has this weird song on the radio that you hear and you're like, man, this is horrible, but you can't get it out of your head. You know, so you listen to it over and over and over, and you're going to work, you're singing yeah, it, and true, then, you know, true. a month down the road, you're like, and man, you, this is catchy. And you hated it when you first heard it. I, I, mm -hmm. There are songs in the radio that I sing, and I'm like, I don't even like this song. Why am I singing it? Yeah, exactly. Ugh. Exactly. <laughs> okay, Cupid. Well, this has been great to have you on the I show. Love but the name Cupid. What are, are there, is there anything uh, coming up in Toronto that people, or uh, in Southern Ontario, or anywhere that people can uh, actually check you out? Uh, well, tonight, I'm going to do, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to headline another... Uh, the music circle competition. Uh, they're having some. They're gonna have some great talent. The last one I was at had some amazing talent, amazing singers. Is this all hip hop? I uh, no, no. Across the board, every genre of music you can nice. think of. Um, I mean, the last one I was at, they had blues, you know, jazz. They had beatboxers there, you know, a little bit of reggae. I mean, they really do have a little bit of everything. So I'm gonna headline uh, an event tonight at the Rock Pile, uh, 5555 Dundas Street West. Okay. Um, we're working on putting a tour together right now. Uh, my manager's got some things, and I, I'm, I'm not allowed to announce what that's going to be. Maybe you can come back. Yet. Yeah, and we, talk I would to love. I would it. definitely. And I would love to do, come back. Maybe do a performance when he comes back. Yeah, yeah. I would love to. I would no love pressure, to. Hugh. Okay, and uh, in the meantime, if people want to just get and stay in touch, is uh, I know you got some web stuff up there where people can check out some of your songs and stuff like that. Yeah, we. Uh, you you can check me out at uh, Facebook. Um, Cupid King of Hearts, all one word is my fan page, and Cupid King of Hearts, uh, all separate, is also my kind of personal fan page as well, where I stay connected with everybody. Uh, I have a Twitter, which is Cupid King of Hearts. Uh, but it's spelled Q, Q P I D. Okay. Okay. I don't spell it uh, with the C. This is like the hip hop way to spell it. Yes, yeah, it's a hip hop way to spell it. Um, the white hip hop way to spell it. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, you can check me out there. You can go to Reverb Nation as well. Okay. Uh, ReverbNation.com, and you can look me up, Cupid King of Hearts, there as well. I have some songs there, um, so nice. people can kind of check out nice. and see what I, what I have and and what I'm gonna be doing and putting down for my album. And nice. Yeah. Okay. Great. Well, we look forward to that, and people can check it out tonight at the Rock Pile. Yeah, you can come see out me at on the Rock Dundas Pile. West. So uh, great to meet you, Cupid, and have this conversation. Oh. We got another video. Well, not you know a song. We're gonna just watch. Yeah. Yeah, Slash feel free. listen it was, uh, to right now. I put it down? Yeah, I put it down. A little uh, comical video I put together because my, my sister gave me the idea because her, her dog likes to put it down a lot with the teddy bear. So, so yeah. we're going to learn what put it down means <laughs> in I kept having the idea now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And good uh, luck to Emma and for you and your back as well. Oh, thank Best you very luck. much. Thank All you right. very much. Thanks again for having me. Okay. Thank you for And we're going to come back. Uh, back perform. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to come back with Stacy Y as Liquid Lunch continues. But here's uh, Cupid right now. I put it down. We'll be right back. Yeah. 
cookie. I love me a mix. Don't flip, get a grip, let's go for a ride. Double dip the cookie crisp and see what's inside. I'm always thinking, dirty girl, what's on your mind? Slow motion and shit like the sands of time. Slow motion and shit like the sands of time. Slow motion and shit like the sands of time. Slow motion and shit like the sands of time. Slow motion and shit like the sands of time. I put it down. I put it down. I put it down. I put it down. I know she wanna get me home so we can be alone. Beat it up and then I'm gone. This ain't no love. Ain't no love song. All right, welcome back to Liquid Lunch, and we're here with uh, Stacy Y and uh, Mark Rankin joining us here. Stacy, you brought the red piano. Yes, I did. Which even has your name on it. I was too. noticing that too. The red piano <laughs> that's got your name on it, and and then we've got the red bass or guitar. You, Hockey tape. Um, it used to say, say stage. Now it's oh, Stacy. Oh. <laughs> oh, I didn't even know. Oh, that's really good. 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 That's good. You. you need a Y in there. Yeah. You need white hockey tape for that. <laughs> I'll work on that. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a bit of space right there. It's perfect. We need to get the white tape and what good masking tape will do. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, well, let's find out a little bit about you, Stacy, because uh, you're doing music. You, you got, you're working on an album, right? Yes. So yeah. you're you're serious about this stuff. Yeah, very excited about the album. This is going to be the... Uh, quite a big project that we're working on. Um, we did, we've been working on it for a year now, and we did um, most of the bet tracking actually at Humber College Studios, which, which is where we went mm -hmm. um, to college. And um, then we did some overdubs at little studios around Toronto. Right now we're in the overdub um, mixing stage. Um, we will be mastering very soon, and we're working on some artwork as well. Wow. So when you say we, is there a whole band? I know you got Mark here today. Yes. And it's probably is. a stripped down version of what we normally exactly. would mm -hmm. hear from you. But There is a whole band. It's a four piece band. So myself on keys and vocals, Mark Rankin on bass, um, Tom Hanley on guitar and vocals, and George Nikolov on drums. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. Well, before we get into it anymore, do you want to grace us with a tune right now because uh, sure. it sounded great in the warm-up we'd mm -hmm. love to hear something definitely um, I guess we'll start with hey sir um, this one is it will be on the new album and it's also on the little EP that we just released called music hey sir Well, I wrote a letter today to the world I had to complain, there's no running water today And my plant withered away I looked outside and I saw there's a war I went to the store, I had to get me some bread But they said, there's no more Hey, sir, hold the door do you know why we're fighting? Hey, sir, please don't go. I won't bite. I just want to know. So I sealed my letter today, sent it off very far away. I hope to figure out why someone took the stars in the sky who cut the trees stole the seeds tell me who did these dirty deeds who put the homeless on the streets who put cameras under our sheets hey sir hold the door do you know why we're fighting Just wanna know. So I sat and waited all day, and I feared something's right. And Otto made a reply, soon appeared. I wanted to cry. They said your letter came through with you, a case. 10,002. The query has been placed in the queue. Don't call us. Maybe we'll call you. Hey, sir. Hold the door 
Do you know, do you know why we're fighting? Hey sir, hey sir, please don't go, mm, don't you go I won't bite, I won't bite, I just want to know Hey sir, hold the door So what's, uh, that sounds like a very socially relevant commentary yes. type song. A little Stacey. bit about what's the theme of that song? It's very much open to inf interpretation. Yes. But I guess it definitely comments on um, just the freedom that we might think we have in our society that we don't necessarily see, have. That's, uh, see, what I found was really interesting was I found that the, the, the topic was complex but your approach is very light. Very light, yeah. It's so kind it's of interesting. Um, it's captivating that way because you think by the type of music that we're going to be talking about, fun, light, you know, mm -hmm. uh, you know. Yeah, and it's told from a kind of uh, innocent to person's perspective. Yes, but it's still very complicated mm -hmm. in its own way. So it was, I found that it was a really, really interesting mix. I was very captivated by the lyrics. Thank you. It was really so you're asking, it took me on a journey. I'm real sorry. I'm you're sorry. asking a lot of questions in that song. Yeah. Yes. Right? Have you gotten any answers That's back? That's the next song. The <laughs> next song's the answers. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very much. Um, I like to leave the listeners a little bit, you know, open to interpretation and um, kind of my songs just take the listeners on a journey, you know? That's yeah, and that's exactly what I was saying, because it's very engaging. It's, and that's why it doesn't feel like I'm necessarily coming to hear you sing. I'm coming to share in an experience. Mm -hmm. So you really engaged me, and I really appreciated that as a person in the audience. Hey, thank you. That's what the band is about. Yeah, overall, we just, um, and you know, this is just one of the styles that we kind of mix in. Overall, I guess it's an R&B type of band, but uh, we really, our shows really take the audience on a journey from mellow R&B tunes to rock tunes. And well, uh, I also feel like a, there's a musical theater component here yeah? as well. I also get that kind of, um, cool. yeah. A lot of different influences for sure. Um, myself, I'm, uh, um, I was trained classically as a piano okay. player first, ah, and okay. then um, I went to Humber College and I got my degree in jazz piano performance. Um, wow. And uh, now I'm, you know, I'm doing so much. I'm doing some vocal, um, classical vocal work, and um, we, um, all of the musicians in the band, actually, we play in so many different projects, including, you know, Bollywood music, all kinds of Dude, stuff. Do really? Yeah. So wow. it's it's all, um, at least for me, it's all coming into my songwriting a little bit. Of course, bit. of yeah. course. How can it not influence it? Mm -hmm. And I'm just wondering if, uh, and we've got Mark here, uh, if the other players in this group contribute to the songwriting or to the arrangements or anything yeah, like that? Yeah, definitely, for of course, sure. Yeah, a lot of it is just pretty much coming to one room and, you know, Stacy would come with her ideas and we would pretty much just craft it from there. So you get to make up the bass parts, right? <laughs> Sometimes she has some well. cool ones. I think the one I just played, she actually yeah, wrote. Yeah, I kind of yeah. told him what to play there, but, <laughs> but no, the, uh, the van is amazing, you know, um, it's made up of, uh, you know, working Toronto musicians and they're all, uh, you know, just bring so much to, to the vibe, to the band. It's, it's really a good working okay, process. Well, Go ahead. Well, we'd love to hear one more song, yeah. if you could. Sure, definitely. Um, do you want to maybe do Open Lot? Yeah, okay. Which one are we doing? This one's called Open Lot, um, so we'll bring it down a little bit. Open Lot? Open Lot. Right. This is available on um, the EP that we just released called okay. Music, um, which you can find on uh, Bandcamp. Um, it will be on iTunes soon. 
and uh, it will be available on the upcoming release as well. Inside I'm mortified and the lights are changing slowly The night's too painted red and the rain has come down on me I wake up in denial and I'm right back on the bottom Still open to the thought that will part Like a fairy tale in disguise I try not to waste my time I do, I try To figure out my own advice Who to follow I will, I'll try Not to seek out why We're so eager to Follow our own lives And I will, I'll try To forget that time when you would come dry your sorrow But that was long ago, oh, didn't you know? I loved you so, didn't you know? So um, now uh, you've got the uh, EP out now and you've got the album. Any idea when the album's going to be coming out? Um, we're a little bit behind schedule right now. Um, hopefully um, by the end of this year. So we're actually hoping November. Um, okay. Yeah. Well, we look forward but, to that. But uh, well, more info time. definitely on uh, StacyY.com is okay. where you'll find all the info. Especially on the Facebook page. That's where I post all the upcoming shows and everything. Yeah. Now does the album have a name? Yeah. It's going to be called um, Set the Water Straight. Set the Water Straight? Yeah. What's that all about? Uh, oh, very cool. it's, I love I that. Could, <laughs> it would take a while to 
<laughs> Is it got to do with uh, Dr. Emoto? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> Just checking. Um, but there's a lot of kind of uh, <laughs> water, um, um, uh, things about water in the in the album. Yeah. Is it about, um, like global warming and the ice oh, melting? No. no. <laughs> Okay. okay, we're not, we're well, not, we're not getting it. <laughs> well, we're looking forward to that. Now, any uh, performances? Uh, we got a um, video coming up of you guys yeah. performing at Sneaky D's, but cool. any other uh, performances? Um, we are playing. Um, we got Drake Hotel coming up. Um, Drake Hotel in um, October. I'm not sure the date exactly. It um, it's on the website as well. And we've got um, we actually are playing at the Urban Music Festival. That's in November. It's in November. Oh, wow. But the date and venue um, also will be. Okay. Okay. Announced. Well, that's great. Well, we'd love to see you back when the album comes out, and uh, good luck with finishing that project. And, great. Uh, Thanks so much for having us. Yeah, it was great to have you here, and the music sounded great. Absolutely, it sounds awesome. And set the water straight. That's just. We won't forget that. You should look yeah. up Dr. Moda, though. Because <laughs> he's trying to set the water straight, too. No, I think it's setting the people straight. Through the water. Yes, through the water. <laughs> okay, so we're going to watch this video now of you guys performing at Sneaky D's, and we're going to come back with uh, Ann Chaplin as Liquid Lunch continues. We'll be right back. Thanks, guys. Welcome back to the show. Another phenomenal artist. I know. And she's from Deep River, Ontario. And Without. you just asked me if I liked river. Uh, no, winter. Winter. And uh, you You'd like it if you were there. I would? Yes. Where's Deep River? It's about 500 kilometers northeast yeah. on the Ottawa River. But oh, it's beautiful. It's not as it's not beautiful. as humid, so it's cold. It's a dry cold. But it's, it's a dry cold. See, <laughs> and it's so pretty that it makes up for it. Well, yeah, and, and, but you know what? The dry colds are not so bad. Oh, it's yeah. the damn cold. See, she's from Sudbury. I was colder here. Yeah, I'm from Sudbury, so I know cold. But yeah. I could handle walking into a freezer, which was Sudbury. That's pretty much Sudbury. But this kind of cold, it's you know 10 degrees warmer, but 
It it's gets colder. right into your bones. Oh my god, it does. It really does. So you, but not in Deep River, right? Not in Deep River. Which is <laughs> what is that? Is that like halfway between Pembroke and Mattawa? Um, no, it's closer to Pembroke than it is to Mattawa. Okay. See, there you go. Is the river really deep there? It is apparently. I haven't personally tested it. Have you it. not been out on the river? I have lived on the river, but I never, you know, tested the depth okay. personally. But, did you but I've heard many stuff? things. I've heard there's some lurking creatures. Well, it is one of those creatures. things. It's, it's, you know, it's like the Bermuda Triangle. You go when you don't come out. That's why they're It not is going. like that because I it's prefer to be on the surface myself. I was <laughs> stuck on the surface. I taught sailing actually, so I was out oh, there wow. every day. Nice. Very cool. Yeah. So why did you? You left all that beauty up there in Deep River and came down to Toronto to do a musical yeah. career. To meet you. There you go. Wow. You're going to do go very well now. in this industry. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I knew it was the biggest city. I was a little naive about, I, I kind of assumed everybody liked country and folk, but it's, it's pretty different here than it is the rest of Canada. But it is, it's the biggest city. There's a big industry. There are tons of artists. And it, it's a good place to be for, to, to try to build build a following, get some contacts, and just work on your craft. Are you saying Toronto's not a country town? Maybe. <laughs> yeah. See, this is a girl who knows how to answer correctly. See that? That's, wow. You're, you're as yeah. big as well. possible. It doesn't really seem like a country town, does it? Not so much, I no. Know. I think every it's the only place that really doesn't have a country station. I know. Surprised that's at that. Is that right? I didn't even... Oh. Yeah. Yeah, Oshawa does, so we're getting that now, but for a while there, there was nothing. It was coming from Hamilton, it was kind of fuzzy, reminded me of home in that sense, the fuzzy wow. station, but. Now, are you thinking at all of going to the States and Nash doing the Nashville thing? Because a lot of country it's people very in tempting. There are tons of Canadians in Nashville. Like, you go, you go to Nashville yeah. to write with Canadians, that's the joke now. But maybe oh, if you isn't went, that funny? Oh, yeah, that's right, yeah. But uh, wow. it, I it's, I was just there, I, I recorded a lot of the album there, and it's an amazing place. It really is. It, it's in the air, the songwriting. You recorded it's, it's an album? Cool. Yes, my album is finished. It's not released yet, though. And you recorded it um, in... Well, mostly here, actually, but we did bed tracks there because yeah. wow. their musicians are just phenomenal. Not just that ours aren't, but now, how, they're, all, they're very Nashville. country. They know what's going on on country radio. Yeah. They're very infused in but, it. But, okay, you know, before we hear a song, we want to hear, we're looking forward to hearing the song now, but it got me going about, like, there's, like, somehow the new country, most of it, just doesn't, do it for me like the old country. I don't know whether it's like old A lot of people say wine, that. I think once it gets in your bones, though, it's, it's there. Kind of like the cold. Is it really? <laughs> it, it, you get addicted to it. It's pretty awesome. It's so very real. So would you real. say you're a new country yet? It is yeah. real. Okay. You're saying the new country is real? I think it's very real. Because I was going with the idea that it wasn't as real as the old okay, country. So, so that okay. was more real. Okay, so here's my take on it, okay? When I think new country, I think Shania, okay? okay. And I think a lot of those, those kind of artists like Shania where it's more about the machine of the country business, right, as opposed to the authenticity in the country music. But now I think what's happening is it's going back to authenticity with the flair of the new country. Yes. That's what I think is, is happening. I do think that's happening. And so that's why I think when you, I think there's more integrity being brought into it. So I think it's actually more like a fusion. So it's taking the, the hip and, and, you know, the good looking, like the mainstream good looking girls and all that in the country music, but it's actually bringing back the actual. It's like realism. the old country with a money shot. Exactly. That's perfect. You need to hear some of the, the, the Canadian artists that are out right now are just phenomenal. The songwriting is phenomenal. I like know. The, the Jason Blaines, uh, the Wilkinsons are back. They've got a small band. Are they? I don't oh, know who we they had are. Them on the show the once. They are, really? Yeah. The songwriting and the artistry, and it's all really real stuff they're talking about. It's none of the glitz and glamour and the stuff that distracts you from the real stuff. Nice. But it's, it's not as um, twangy and it's more palatable, good. I think, to people that are. Yeah, the can twang. Get way uh, too much at times. Twang is good. But um, just a little it, twang. It might have gone ten percent, maybe twang. You don't want to alienate people either. You know With what I mean. With too much twang. A, exactly. You want to find a balance. That's why <laughs> Toronto's not a country town because of the twang. <laughs> Anyways, we'd love to hear one of your songs now. I'd love we'll, to play we'll one for you. We'll see. We'll rate your twang quotient out of ten. Okay. <laughs> I, the song's I, called Twang. By the, the way, the song is now called Twang. <laughs> I'll, that'll be an expensive change on the album for sure. <laughs> What's the song called? This song is actually called Wiley. Wiley, okay. It's about a road back home. We all have that road that we spent a lot of time on. I thought it was about a dog. Which is typical country, right? The dog and the pickup truck, sorry. <laughs> you can believe whatever you want. We can call <laughs> Wiley a dog, too. <laughs> this is Wiley. Friend, we had a 
packed To make it through to 20 With our hearts intact And always make it home For Christmas and Thanksgiving When the road gets too dark Give each other a call Like when we drove around town On the old dirt roads Talking on that night Talking at all Cried until we laughed Laughed until we cried Just seeing where the night would take us Down at the river Toes in the sand Dreaming big dreams Making big plans When I lose my place You'll find me Driving down the Wiley And time it goes so fast sometimes You just lose track And you can't remember the last time That you had a laugh with a real good friend And sometimes that's all you need and realize what you've been missing Maybe it's time to get home Pick up the phone and let's go Drive around town on the old dirt roads Talking all night, not talking at all Cried until we left, left until we cried Just seeing where the night would take us Down at the river, toes in the sand Dreaming big dreams, making big plans When I lose place you'll find me driving down the wide Talking at all, cried until we left, left until we cried, just seeing where the night would take us. Down at the river, toes in the sand, dreaming big dreams and making big plans. It was you and me, and all we were was free. Driving down. Yeah, that's really Thank nice. You. When you started playing it there, it kind of reminded me a little bit of like Wonderwall, even. Oh my God. <laughs> right? That's true. Oh, crap. <laughs> Which, well, no, it's not. They were probably copying. Not that you're they copied copying. They copied me. You're not Those copying. Jerks. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying it had to. It, it makes me ask the question like, really, what's the difference between rock country, music yeah. and country music? Well, when you break it down to a guitar and a guitar player that's not a very good guitar player, so they're just courting, not all that much. If I was a better guitar player, and I might have the little guys in there, but but when when the band's there and the pedal steel and you got your fiddle and your oh. fantastic music, you got all that going on you. in in your record. That's, that's all in the record, you and I was so lucky to have these amazing musicians. They really, they're uh, underrated. So how did you uh, assemble this fine group of my producer Doug Romano? He he knows all the guys and he put it all together. Wow. wow, so you didn't have to do I a know lot. Doug. He did everything. You know Doug. Well, I met him. I'm sorry. No, I'm kidding. Does he still have Doug's that studio o over <laughs> like around, I don't know. He's in Noble Street Studios now. Oh, okay. Which is just, uh, it's one of those studios that where away. you're... It's that away. Yeah, it's that away. Yeah. Uh, okay, that was a beautiful great. song. And you know what? Thank that you. is very palatable for country music. No, no twang. No twang factor well, there. Well, no, I, I was oh, going to give her some twang. There was two, there was just a little bit. Maybe just one your voice. Twang. Your voice is a country voice. And I'm... I'm uh, I think Trisha Yearwood's got some serious competition. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> so we'll go find her and tell her. <laughs> is the record out yet? Or? It's not. I am doing my iTunes release on Saturday. Okay. Very excited about it. I'm going to do my digital release soon, mm -hmm. and sooner than uh, my actual physical release, which I'm hoping for mid-January, early to mid-January. Wow. Very okay, nice. well, we would love to have you back when you do that. Are you performing sure. anywhere? Uh, yes, yeah, Saturday I'm performing at the Black Cat, which is Jane and Dundas, and that'll be the iTunes release. I'm hoping to have some special guests out, so make sure you make secret, it. Secret, secret. 
secret special guests. You have to come to see who yeah. they but are. But when that's Saturday? On Saturday. This yeah. Saturday. This coming Where's Saturday. Where's that black cat? Jane and Dundas. I know. Is right on the Jane corner. Across Dundas. from the beer store. You can't miss it. Okay, look for the beer store. <laughs> look for the beer store. Okay. That's the marker. Um, would you do one more for us? I'd that, love to. It sounded so great. It did. It sounded wonderful. Thank you very much. Uh, and thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. And what's this one called? This is called Drive, which is the name of the album. And uh, the song means a lot to me. It's about uh, really trying to learn to live in the moment and to not let things pass you by, to, uh, to be more aware of the people around you, of the feelings around you, of, of the beautiful wow. things that are around you. See, country can be spiritual too. Wow. Definitely. That's amazing. So <laughs> that's new country. It's a fusion. See, there you go. There you go. and a boo, a scrape and a moan, a billow of smoke, but their heads don't turn. He walks out the door after 15 years. She's so caught up in her world, she doesn't shed a tear. Shade from the sun, run from the rain. There's a pill for the joy, pill for the pain. I'm gonna drive till every star is clear. Won't hit the brakes for nothing till the only thing I hear is the beating of my heart and the sound of my own feet. I'm gonna run before I forget Colorful world, it's a stifled fire in a monotone girl. Oh, we're so afraid to hurt that we don't feel joy. Concrete hearts and concrete boy, I'm gonna drive till every star is clear. Won't hit the brakes for nothing. Till the only thing I hear is the beating of my heart and the sound of my own feet. I'm gonna run before I forget what it feels like to feel. Smile and laugh, the wind and the rain. I got my foot on the gas till I feel something again. I'm gonna drive till every star is clear. Won't hit the brakes for nothing till the only thing I hear is the beat. Of my heart and the sound of my own feet, I'm gonna run before I forget what it feels like to feel. And oh, I'm gonna drive. That what was an great. angel voice you have. Thank you. Absolutely. So, wow. um, you know what? I can absolutely hear this stuff on mainstream radio. So, as country as it may be, that could be on mainstream radio, like well, non-country, like rock radio stations <laughs> in Toronto, which are not country. I could hear that on some the of Lady Antebellum esque uh, crossover thing. Is definitely what does that it'd mean? Be nice, <laughs> Lady Antebellum esque. Lady Antebellum esque. So it's it's country. 
the the country folk like it, but it's it doesn't alienate any kind of genre. Really. I, I really think that there's a ro wow. there's room for that. It's like it could almost be rock, but it's like no cowboy hats, you know, no southern. There's nothing draw, wrong with cowboy hats. You know, just play the music. It's really a, f a f kind of folk music. Really, yeah. it's just a, a it's just natural music that people would play. Well, and if it I resonates guess, guess, with people, then... But, you know, I guess it depends on how you dress it up with the rest of the band. You could go really country with it, or you could go more like the folk, or you could go more rock, right? Well, you know what? We're going to hear, uh, right now, we're going to hear that single, Wiley. Wiley this is yeah. the produced version, right? So we're going to hear it the way that they ah, are, are making it. Okay. It's got pedal steel, so we're looking forward to that. Anyway, uh, and it's been great to have you on the show. Where, Thank you very where much. can people, like, uh, you know, Go and hear Maury music, Website stay in touch with everything that you're doing. And Chaplin.com. I'll be updating that regularly, but uh, even more regularly, I'll be on Facebook. So, slash and Chaplin official, and uh, Twitter. I'm join the Twitter world and uh, all those things. Okay. Generally, it's just and Chaplin. All right, Ann. Well, thanks for doing this today, and we look forward and to, watch the, out uh, your to the album called Drive coming out. Thank you very much, guys. Very soon. Pleasure to be here. And here's the single. Luck, this is being released on iTunes this weekend, right? On Saturday. Perfect. So we're going to check out this tune, come back with Joe Barbieri, and uh, hit the home stretch here on Liquid Lunch. We'll yes. be right back. Okay, so there was the produced version of Wiley, and that was uh, wow, beautiful. See? And she just sings like an angel. Yeah, she has such a beautiful voice. Okay, and we're here hitting the home stretch now. We got Joe Barbieri, our favorite money guy. Us. And Joe, I can't believe this topic that you've chosen for us this to talk is about today. Unbelievable! But how timely is this at the end of 2012? The end of money. 
the end, end of money. The end of money as we hit okay, the now end I never of thought, the world actually, as we I never know thought, it. I know you've been talking about it, and, uh, but Joe, come on. Joe the investor talking about the end of money. Oh. I don't get it. I love it. I love it. We finally have something in common. <laughs> okay, so here's the, um, the story behind that topic. Does it have anything to do with UFOs? Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> So, well, you, you know about the debt story, but I'm not going to get into the debt story. I'm going to get into the latest announcements about okay. QEX from oh. the Federal Reserve and the ECB. Now, if you boil all that down, it just means they're going to print as much money as they think necessary mm -hmm. to get the economy up to speed again. Yeah. Now, if you think back to 2008, they mm -hmm. tried printing a whole bunch of money and nothing really came of it. There was this sort of slow motion growth and nothing really took off. Yeah. So now they've said, well, we need to do more of it. Mm -hmm. So they're going to print more money. But if you print more and more and you don't get a reaction, yeah. that means you'll be printing an un unlimited amount of money. Mm -hmm. And if you just go by the numbers, you're going to have a hugely diluted currency. It, it, you know, I've been thinking about this because I know that they're in, in uh, printing more money. Uh, they're not actually necessarily printing it, but they're creating it. They're creating, they're creating the money. Yeah. And I think it's getting sucked up by the banks, who were the ones that blew it in the first place. Mm. And, um, I mean, there was that uh, big debate within the last couple of weeks, uh, Mark Carney criticizing Canadian corporations for what he called dead money. That's money that's just cash that's sitting there in the bank that's not circulating. And as long as it stays mm. in the bank, it's not available for people to be using. So this is why I think that the, even though they're creating all this money, there's, it's not producing the inflation that, that certainly could be one of the byproducts of all this money creation. And so now if you go further than that and say, what if that money gets unleashed? Mm -hmm. And what if it happens fast? What will, what will be the effect? What would be the effect? Well, it would be hyperinflation. But how would that money get unleashed? I mean, right now, it's like it's, it's a very strange game well, that's what, going yeah, on. But you know what? If you can print money as easy as that, then couldn't you just take that money instead of printing new money and killing more trees, just take the money that's dead and bring it back to life? Well, this, too simple? well this is the counter There's a lot argument. of def things we'd have to define in that. This is the counter argument that the Fed is saying. If they print too much, they can just take it back. But the problem is there's a timing. So now they're saying we're going to issue more and more money. They can just de-issue it, call it back in, and take it out of circulation. Okay, that doesn't leave me feeling very good. I mean, see, I am feeling good about that. Why? Well, because <laughs> they can take it back. Okay, but okay, it doesn't make me feel very good to know that they don't know what the heck they're doing. So if we happen to print too much, we can just take it back. It's timing. That's who we leave our welfare in the hands of people who don't even know how much money to print and if they print too much they can well, always they, take it back it's not that they don't know but they're late in reacting because they're waiting for the signals the gdp and the employment numbers and all those numbers you hear on the news those sim signals to tell them okay we now have enough or and then if it goes too far we now have too much but by the time the signals come in, it might be three months later. And it, it's in circulation. How do you take that back if it's in circulation? Well, how they issue money is with bonds. Oh, okay. okay. They, they, they okay. issue bonds, meaning they sell them. Okay. And people buy them. And they, they roll over every so many days, okay. every so many months. So when the old ones expire, they just say, we're not selling these. They're okay. out of commission. Okay. okay. And then the supply of money goes down. Okay, Joe, I, I'm, I'm sort of detecting that you sort of got your tongue in your cheek when you're saying that this is, this is going to be the end of money because your, your point being that if they can well, continue this to create it and it's not going to cause inflation, then they just keep printing more and more and more. But it seems to me we're really on new ground economically and the, the people that are running the system uh, are kind of trying to figure it out, but they're thinking solidly within the paradigm. Right, and I think that's part of the problem here. And this is the next phase of the topic. This is what the system is doing, but 
there's people out of the system mm -hmm. looking at it, saying they're reacting to it. So an example is the barter movement. Okay. The barter movement is getting very, very big mm -hmm. with companies, people, governments, bartering with gold, bartering with oil, bartering with uh, produced product, local bartering networks. Mm -hmm. There's a lot more of these. And the last time there was a lot of these was in the, in the Depression. Mm -hmm. And they did it back then to circumvent the problems with the currencies that happened then. And now we're seeing it happening again. So even though you have this QE whatever going on, it doesn't happen in isolation. Mm. Everything around it is saying, okay. They're reacting to I'm that. I'm seeing that. <coughs> maybe I don't want to be in this. Right. Or maybe I want some alternative. And the people are making the alternatives. So the end of money might mean the end of the traditional form, but it'll be another form. Well, of exchange. Yeah, yeah, and I'm seeing a bunch of these forms coming into play now. And how is it going to end? Well, it's, it's interesting that you should say that, because this is a financial discussion, but when you talk to the New Age people, not that you're one of those, Sandra. Not that there's anything wrong with being <laughs> one of those. Not that there's anything wrong with being New Age, but they talk about, you know, the, the, there is going to be an impending collapse, and I think a lot of people you know, really understand that this financial system that we have is maybe on its last legs. And, uh, and but they're saying, you know, and, and people are saying you can't really reform the system. I mean, even these Ben Ber Bernanke guys, like, I can't see that they can't reform the system. It's just too many entrenched ideas, too many entrenched institutions. But the good news, people are, are being hopeful that by the time that that system comes crashing down like the house of cards that it is, that there will be these alternatives yes, that are gonna place. step up to the plate yeah. and be there to save people's livelihoods and just keep life going even after the system itself collapses. And that's a really good summary, Hugh. And, and, and the New Age people won't say I told you so. <laughs> but Joe, I mean. And well, I'm, that's basically it, but I'm saying the systems are already here the barter is already here. Yeah. People and are already inventing their own currencies to use. And some people, mm -hmm. some people have said that it's the monetary system is not even on its last legs. It's already collapsed. They're just faking it out. It's 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 a car that's on that the tank is empty. It's just moving because it's going downhill. So it's go, it's it's using gravi the gravity <laughs> to to make it move. So a lot of people say it's already dead. It's just a matter of um, playing it out. Well, now. it's just it's just interesting to see how much QEX they can do without spurring any kind of major inflationary movement. Joe, and I know you've thought a lot about this, but you know the way things are going. Do you have any idea of how it might end? How this thing might come to or a, when? a crashing or how about even halt? When? Like what will be the the tipping point or the uh, the the event that causes the whole thing to go? The, the secret for me is the trust. The reason why we have money that we have is based on the trust in the issuer, the government, the Bank of Canada, okay. the Fed. When there's enough people that say, I don't believe this stuff anymore, then you'll see a turning point then. It'll happen very quickly. Mm -hmm. But I think by then there'll be a series of other things going on and people will just switch. I mean, the metals people talk about this, buy gold instead, buy silver instead, buy land instead, buy food instead. There's already a bunch of these movements. Mm -hmm. And others will say buy different currencies, but I think they're pretty similar. Mm -hmm. So people are already setting the stages for something to switch to. Well, I don't know. I mean, look at uh, what happened to, uh, what's his name in Libya? Uh, his name escapes me at the moment. Gaddafi. Gaddafi. Because I understand he was involved in trying to create a gold-backed, oil-backed, Afri pan-African currency, and look what happened to him. Yeah, well, the idea is not dead, though. Yeah. Just he's out of the picture, but there's still people And then Syria was thinking do of doing that, and mm, I heard Iran was maybe thinking but about okay, doing now, that. But this is a threat to the Western world, right? So of course they're going to quash that as much as they can, right? If we move away from a U.S. currency, isn't that the big threat? Well, it's going to be a big threat to the U.S. Yeah, and so that's, I think, why all of these people are kind of shut down. Actually, even, even with um, uh, Iraq, 
now the name escapes me, the guy who was killed. Hussein? Hussein. They say that the reason they actually went into Iraq is not because of the oils, because he had said he wanted to, to mm. leave the U.S. currency. He didn't want to work for the U.S. currency the anymore. Yes. And that's yeah. what actually... That's right. So I'll I don't know how true here. that is, but... Well, if we extend that, okay, so you've had Syria, you've had Libya, you've had Iraq. Now let's go to Iran. There won't be as easy to push over as no, the last three. No, and no. if you've hit Iran, then you've got China. They've been talking about a, a gold-based yuan for a little while. Yeah. Now, do you think someone's going to go and attack China? I don't think the U.S. would. Stand well, apparently, the U.S. Navy and the Chinese Navy are cooperating to fight off some uh, very unfriendly UFOs off the U.S. West Coast. And those UFOs want. <laughs> we, d <laughs> we do have video of that, Joe. We'll play it at the end. <laughs> but they don't have money up there. They so do. No, that's the problem. They have s they have the hundreds and hundreds of spaceships s uh, orbiting the planet, filled with cash. Ah, so that's how instead of printing money, we're just going to drop They're it from the UFOs. It. Alien cash is way more valuable because they got metals that are way more valuable than gold. Though. Like they got metals that you can see through. He says, mm. "I'm New Age." Okay, Joe. <laughs> Listen, uh, are we, uh, have we pretty much covered the topic? It's a very interesting time. What do you recommend to people you know, in this scenario now? What should they be doing in terms of their finances? For this topic, well, yeah. the key is what do you use the money for and obtain whatever you use the money for. Okay, and one, one quick question, okay. So an example is the basics. If you like land, put your money into land. Put your money into your house. Put your money into covering. You put your money into retirement, pension. Is that non-existent now? The short answer for me is control it yourself. Okay. Put it in your and mattress. Put it, so put it in put your mattress. Thank you. <clears throat> well, it can be in a in a bank, but the more control you have, the better. Or bury Mickey's in your front yard. Then the world, everything's okay, no matter what. Because you've always got something to trade. Okay, Joe. Um, now, where can people get in touch with you? Of course, you got the, sh the show here on uh, that channel, the I Cube do, Talk yeah. Show. When can people tune in for that? And where can people get and stay in touch with you? Uh, it's all on my website, JoeTheInvestor.ca. There's a media tab with the shows, and there's a contact us page which has all my uh, social media outlets on it. So. That's the easiest way to find out. Okay. What's cube stand for, Joe? It actually is in the shape of the cube. So is it, is it representative it of thinking outside the box? Outside ah. the cube, yeah. Okay, Joe. See, I got that. Well, listen, always great to have you on the show. Uh, thanks for doing this today. And uh, people Thank can check you. out JoeTheInvestor.ca. And now uh, we are going to roll that video. This is talking about that UFO war that's going on. Do we get to on. see them dropping? UFO alien cash? I, well, I would love to see it. It's going to be right now. We're going to see it right now. So thanks, everybody, for tuning in to Liquid Lines. We'll see you all tomorrow for more right Duff here. on the senior editor for the Veterans Today, this periodical. Listen to this story. I'm going to read it verbatim. Reports of Chinese naval vessels off the U.S. coast, Northern California in particular, have been reported but denied. But now an Asian intelligence agency reports that a combined fleet operation between the U.S. and China has been going on a full combat operation against what we're told is a highly unfriendly extraterrestrial threat. Now, the verifications of the fleet operations have been many. There have been no confirmations from the U.S. side, though the ships have been seen by every vessel that makes it offshore. The true nature of both the threat and the extent of the multinational military force used is beyond any classification level. The rumors say extraterrestrial craft are operating from underground bases. And according to Gordon Duff, the actual classified memo simply says, opposition is extraterrestrial and extremely aggressive and unfriendly. The threat represents a clear and present danger and is isolated to the Pacific Basin. Now, that is one strange story. Stephen Bassett with us, of course. Stephen is an expert on various areas of the so-called UFO phase. Stephen, what do you think of this story? 
This is a significant story in a relatively serious publication. It's a foreign affairs journal, Veterans Today. If it were to receive corroboration from intelligence sources, particularly on the U.S. side, it has truth embargo-busting possibilities. It's also notable that, uh, as you know, uh, uh, George, many researchers believe that thousands of members of the U.S. military over the last 60 years have been directly involved with the ET phenomenon. It's part of their job under strict national security classification with no intention of ever speaking about it. However, I think Gordon Duff is someone who they have maybe been talking to, uh, meaning I can't go public, but I'm going to tell you about it. And I think he's been hearing these stories for years, which is why he has had the courage to publish a number of ET-related stories in his foreign affairs journal with veterans today. Uh, so this cannot be dismissed. It could be very, very significant. Uh, the other thing I would mention, though, in caution, is that because this story includes this concept of highly dangerous uh, threatening extraterrestrials, we have to be careful. This might be disinformation being shoved out That's there right. as part of a standard routine to uh, keep us off balance on this matter. Another false flag. Thank you, Stephen. Stephen's website, part of our Twitter feed at coasttocoastam.com. Look into my eyes, look into my heart See the way I feel, I want this all to stop No more driving by, no more hang-up halls No more empty lies, I want this all to stop Cause you can tell me you love me, but you don't care You say you want me, baby, but it's not there What do you do at night when I'm not around you? You ever cry alone and the tears aren't found Looking for the edge, I'm gonna be on top I put on this wig and I imitate a cop I don't wanna call or check up on you Cause I'm not your mother, cause that's not my job Cause you can tell me you love me, but you don't care You say you want me, baby, but it's not there What do you do at night when I'm not around? You ever cry alone and the tears aren't found? Sure you want me now, do you want me back? You better prove to me what love is all about Do you want to stay, do you want to go? Make up your mind, gonna boot you off the door Cause you can tell me you love me, but you don't care You say you want me, baby, but it's not fair What do you do at night when I'm not around? You ever cry alone when the tears aren't found The way you wink your eye You think you're so cool But you're really not that smart I'll find another man Who will treat me right Stop the silly urge I want the thought to stop Cause you can tell me you love me But you don't care You say you want me Baby, but it's not fair What do you do at night When I'm not around You ever cry alone And the tears aren't sound Cause you can tell me you love me But you don't care You say you want me Baby, but it's not fair What do you do at night When I'm not around You ever cry Thank you.